This is Homegrown, showcasing Alberta producers, artisans, and farming communities. Brought to you by Connect First Credit Union. Hello, I'm Marie Williamson. I'm joined today with Alyssa Fafley of Cubic Farms at her Alberta Grow Center. Thank you for letting the Ag for Life team come in and learn a little bit more about your operation today. Absolutely, I'm excited you're here. Yeah, we, um, we had an opportunity to, to tour the, the production hall where you uh, and your husband and your team are doing some remarkable work. And so let's back this all the way up to the beginning and talk about um, farming. You grew up in this area in Alberta, remote rural Alberta. Your husband grew up in this area and you met on a wondrous night somewhere. <laughs> and how did you get involved with farming? Yeah, so I grew up in Westlock, which is a farming community. And my dad worked in agriculture and we didn't have our own farm, but I was definitely aware of all of the opportunity around me, even growing up. And my husband grew up on a dairy farm. Okay. Uh, and we just really like, four or five years ago started hearing about the controlled egg scene and kind of what was up and coming with vertical farming and having had some experience in agriculture and living in the area where it's, we're so surrounded by it, we were just really interested uh, in what that could mean for being able to grow year round and the opportunities around that in a climate where we can go from minus 30 to plus 30 in the same year and, and how do you manage all of that, right? So just started really looking online and just just through media really um, and came across Cubic Farms and what they were doing with their technology and we were just really floored by the scale that they could provide for vertical farming and for controlled ag and the technology that they were working on so contacted them my husband went for a tour um, and, and met them and, and saw it up close and we just couldn't go without it after we had seen it. Yeah, it's remarkable. So yeah, you're surrounded by, you know, traditional Alberta agriculture, right? We got fields and uh, vast amounts of uh, equipment rolling. And, um, and so you're thinking vertical. You're thinking, okay, well, we're going to get into farming, but we're going to do vertical farming. We're going to do things a little bit differently. What was the appeal? So it's very different. Uh, or it's, you know, it's, it's going to probably be a huge growth, grow, growing area moving forward, but today it's a startup. It's, it's new in Alberta, really. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot of people with a lot of questions uh, in the area about what we were doing and questions about, is this going to work yeah. out here? What are you even growing in there, right? So for us, it was the excitement at the opportunity to grow year round in a climate where that's not available traditionally. Um, and then to be able to grow leafy greens year round, which is, you know, and there are greenhouses in Southern Alberta, and there is some opportunity for that. Um, but to be able to provide that at a really large scale, completely climate controlled um, and locally, mm -hmm. right? So really looking at how far does our food travel before it gets to us? And what could we provide locally for our community um, to avoid having to do that? Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. And so uh, I've had the privilege of hearing a little bit more about your story as we were touring. So, so you started off with, with Cubic Farms um, as farm partners, I understand. Yes, yeah, we were a farmer partner, just uh, purchased a Cubic Farm from them, so we have 14 growing modules. Okay. Um, and we were just growing for sales, right? Growing for the market area, providing that fresh local produce uh, to our community and surrounding communities. And, and so who was the customer? Um, when you were running things and you were and you were reselling the product, uh, was it grocery stores, retail, restaurants, combination of all? Yeah, combination of all of that. We were um, selling to Fresh Forward for some uh, restaurant clients of theirs, um, and then we had sales with Sobeys grocery stores, uh, delivering to their warehouses for all of Western Canada, mm -hmm. um, and then Friesen Brothers as well. So yeah, a little, little mix of grocery stores and um, food service and yeah. Yeah, so you started about four years ago, five years yeah, ago? Yeah, we, we started, like built the farm four years ago and we've been running it for about three years. Okay, so a lot has happened uh, in the last year 
really for you. So, so tell us a little bit about the transition. You were a farmer partner, and now you've really turned into the, well, you are the Alberta Growth Center. You're the hub uh, for a lot of R&D. Yeah, so we, um, Cubic Farms is just growing at such a, a rapid rate, right? Um, and the business of vertical farming and, and local chain ag tech is really exploding. And so they saw the opportunity then as their first commercial farm, we have the most experience in front of these growing modules of anyone on the planet. Yeah. So they came to us and said, like, we really could use your expertise um, in doing more commercial scale research and development and being a support for our future farmer partners so that we can make sure that they are successful and having that knowledge behind it to get them off to the best start possible and, and to help them to grow their businesses. Um, so we jumped at the opportunity to really join the Cubic Farms family uh, and be part of the movement. Yeah, that's remarkable. Well, again, you know, touring us in your production hall, you've got uh, five full-time staff uh, and plus yourself and your husband. And so this, like, it's a growing operation, uh, <laughs> literally. literally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the, um, the items that you're growing? What's, what are you growing within these modules? Yeah, so we're growing several varieties of lettuce. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are also growing several varieties of microgreens. Yes. And including like, some, some larger varieties, you know, some, some pea shoots and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, we're also able to grow many varieties of herbs. Okay. So looking at like basil, parsley, chives, um, and trialing kind of, because we're doing research and development, we're able to trial more varieties and see what the opportunities are for growing in our modules. Right, so tell me a little bit about the trial process, because I would think uh, you're growing the lettuce, um, how, are we, how are we trialing this? What, what are the variations? How are, you, how are you learning through the grow cycle? Yeah, so we have growing protocols that are tried and true in, mm -hmm. in these cubic farm growing modules, but there's always an opportunity to uh, better that, mm -hmm. right? So we're looking at things like what can we do with nutrients um, to give advantages to these crops? What can we do with lighting? What can we do with, because we have the climate control, um, we can be very precise about the climate that we're giving different varieties of lettuce, different varieties of microgreens, um, and so we're kind of look, taking data on, on what we've done to change some of those grow cycles and see if what the improvements are, what the advantages are of new varieties, mm -hmm. and what's available for new crops, right, and um, being able to test that out so that other farmer partners get all of the advantages of our discoveries. Yeah, so, and all of this is centered, it was remarkable, we, we talk about the work we do with Ag for Life, we do a lot around careers and promoting careers to the next generation. Uh, and you yourself are a teacher. Yes. So I, I'm sure you can appreciate, you know, understanding and, and bringing this, you know, the story of agriculture to students and the opportunities. But the science and technology behind this type of, of farming is remarkable. I mean, you've got everything down to, you know, the lighting, the temperature, the humidity, the, the water, the, I mean, everything is, is completely based around science and tech, and then it's put onto an app that you then scan, which goes to a central system, uh, and you can make adjustments as you need to. Is, am I understanding that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then we're also, there's sensors in the modules as well, so that if one of those growing parameters is, is off, or you know we have something like the temperature is lower than what we wanted it to be, or we have something going on within the module that was unexpected, we also get alerts to that through the, through the app. Right. So we're able to make sure that we're going in and fixing that and making sure that there's no damage to our crop. Right, I mean, it's just, you think about it and it's like, you know, sci-fi movie where we're growing, you know, <laughs> but I mean, they're growing tomatoes on Mars and we're yeah. doing all kinds of things. So it's remarkable, but to think about this, I mean, I can imagine you get lots of questions because this is happening in Alberta. Um, you know, it's, it's untraditional agriculture as we would think about it. But as we were saying with the smart farms and the technology and innovation and where farming is going and the progression of farming, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, and if you think about how many more people we're going to have to feed. Yes. Um, Agriculture has to go this direction, right? We need the technology. Um, and I really think it's important that we're doing that locally, right? And like local chain ag tech is going to be what is needed 
for for everyone, for everywhere, right? And even just the the space that we can save by doing that. They're not making more land, mm -hmm. right? And and climate change is a problem. And so looking at being able to maximize the space that you're using to grow, one of our cubic farms growing modules can grow as much lettuce as it would take an entire football field to grow. Wow. So we're able to use the whole cubic footage of that growing module and really cut down on the land use and we're able to cut down on the water that's used to do that as well. We're recycling into the system and being really intentional with how much water we're giving the plants. Yeah, and as you say, um, not worrying about mother nature because um, she doesn't always cooperate. <laughs> Often doesn't cooperate, yeah, yeah. absolutely, it, yeah. Like yeah. storms and yeah. minus 40. Absolutely. Plus 40, yeah. it doesn't matter. We can we can adjust, right? Yeah. And we're protected from that. Which is phenomenal. And, and I mean, we love to support local, right? Albertans love to support local. We love to get to know our farmers. And we know that because that's the work we do with Ag for Life. We get to tell the story of Alberta agriculture. And, and Albertans are proud to be Albertans, and they love supporting uh, our, you know, producers. And so to think that, you know, you're growing this fresh, healthy, affordable product, um, you know, and, and, and you're leading the way for, you know, with Cubic Farms that's going to be scaled across the world. Absolutely, and there are so many Cubic Farms farmer partners popping up across the world, right, as well. Like, there's farms in the United States, there's a, a farm in Australia. Um, this really can be global with the same technology that we're using here. Um, and then every community gets that opportunity to have that fresh local produce. Um, yeah, it's there, around. right? Yeah. Because we do enjoy, and, and, and you know, everybody, I love that because we're always thinking, well, what, eat fresh, eat local in January in Alberta. Yeah. What are we having? And right? now you can. Now yeah. you can, right? You have your, enjoy your, your fresh greens. Yes, and our local community just is so enthusiastic about having the opportunity to get it from us too, right? We have because we're doing research and development, we do have a lot of crops that we don't necessarily have sales contracts lined up for, but they're amazing crops and the lettuce is, is awesome. So we just through our social media channels, we yeah. are able to advertise when we have that available and locals come and pick it up right from the farm gate. So yeah. they, they love it and it, uh, it goes fast when it's available. I would think, and you were telling me too, any of your waste uh, you know, is you know, composting or you know, you've got farmer, farmers in the neighborhood that come for the livestock and yeah. they'll use some of your end bits and they'll yeah, feed it to able, their livestock. We're able to share any of that yes. yeah, locally as well. Which really dovetails a lot into the, you know, the food waste food loss story as well I mean you're you're greatly reducing um, that footprint yeah and you're reducing the food loss um, that happens in transit when it's coming Good from point. other places yes. right you're not spending the lettuce isn't spending weeks on a truck to get to the grocery store it's going to the grocery store the day after it's harvested yeah. so you're getting extended shelf life you're getting better product and it's not, you're not, you don't have any of the food loss that's happening in transit either. Right, and I think that that's remarkable because again, going back to promoting careers and opportunity in agriculture, you know, this will be fun. Think outside the box a little bit, but think in the box. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's a different way and, and like so many, you know, so many industries, you know, tech and innovation and, what we would call unconventional now or alternative is the there's so much room for growth so you're looking into your crystal ball now where do you see i mean you're the the heart of this the r and d or working you know from the grassroots on it where do you see it going honestly i don't think there's a limit in sight um the the Technology is, is growing so quickly. There's so much opportunity. And we see even, you know, with my, my own daughter, people ask her, you know, she's playing with a little doctor kit or whatever. Yeah. Right? And people ask her, oh, do you want to be a doctor? And she'll just shoot you this straight look. And, <laughs> no, I'm going to be a lettuce farmer. <laughs> right? And so we like, we tell this story all the time because it's just like, to her, that's just normal. And so if you look at that next generation, it's like what we're doing is mainstream to them because yes. that's what they see every day. And then what opportunities does that bring for, for growth in the industry when you get their minds at work on it? Um, and then even just 
looking at recent graduates in agriculture programs from, from Lethbridge or from, from the U of A, we have a few grow assistants working for us that have been through more traditional agriculture programs and then have come to us. And so we're thinking they get their fresh educational background right in the middle of our production hall mm -hmm. and the room for growth and opportunity through that is just massive. So I think just bringing online new crops and new technology and new opportunities, um, more sustainable effort, right? Thinking like the sustainable energy that goes into running farms like this as well, the opportunity for solar, for for rainwater collection and reverse osmosis, like the, the list is endless. And I really just think, you know, if you look 10 years down the road, I really can't tell you where I think we'll be because I just don't think there's a limit. Yeah, and as you say, these young minds that uh, are, I think they're being born with computer chips <laughs> because they, you know, it's just, it, they're born with it. Yeah, they're right in the middle of all of it while it's happening. Absolutely, and they're looking at it and, and the data and how to, you know, the data analytics and how to take that and make change and improve on that. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's remarkable and going back to your educational background where, you know, you host students, you know, your local community students come in and see what you're doing. I can imagine the expressions on their faces because this is not what they're used to seeing in the garden. Yeah, not at all. And they're, they're so excited to see it because a lot of them come from traditional cattle farms or grain farms and they're not expecting this so close to where they live yeah and for some of them not before coming here not realizing what's inside the building as they drive by every day it yeah it really opens their eyes to what's possible for their own futures and it's so exciting to to have them come in we get lots of junior high and high school kids coming for tours um yeah just seeing the opportunity yeah that is fantastic so well, we, we know you're busy. You've got um, you know, farm, farmer partners coming from all over the world now that you're hosting to teach and to, to let them learn from your experiences. So we thank you for, for taking the time to let the Ag for Life crew come and, and have a peek uh, at what you're up to. Yeah, and we absolutely. wish you the best of success moving forward. Thank you, yeah, and thanks for sharing what we're doing here. You bet.